in this session let's look at kubernetes architecture now if we have to manage handful of containers it's easy right i think docker is sufficient to run and manage and do all that for us however the real life enterprise microservice architecture applications are different we have 20 50 100 microservices to manage and things gets complicated with the scale it is further complicated you have thousands of containers to manage and what happens if some container goes down how to manage the life cycle of the container and all this becomes tricky and this is where we need container orchestrations or container orchestrator so the job of the container orchestrator is to manage life cycle of the containers when you have large number of containers to manage that's the job of container orchestration so there are two parts now container runtime and container orchestration for container runtime we have looked at docker there are few more available which is rocket crio and all that on the container orchestrator side we have kubernetes nomad and mesos we are going to look into kubernetes so the most popular ones are docker and kubernetes these are the two will be covering in this uh, overall rise of the containers uh, workshop. Kubernetes architecture is classical master worker node type architecture. All the request is submitted to master and actual job or actual work is done by the worker nodes. Now, if I have to draw analogy, I can say that uh, if you have worked on continuous integration system, where you, let's take an example of Jenkins where we have a master which is your server and agents right so all the request of running all kind of build and everything is submitted to server and then server looks at which agent is available and based on that it schedules on the agent and agent picks up does the job reverts it back to the server so that's how the server agent or master worker node architecture works right and kubernetes is also similar we have a Kubernetes master and Kubernetes worker nodes. All the request is submitted to master and actual application or jobs runs on the worker node. Let's look at the different components that are present in each of the master and worker nodes. The first component is API server. It is the face of the Kubernetes master. Every communication happens via API server. We'll look into that in more detail. Second component is scheduler. The job of scheduler is to schedule request or workloads to the specific worker nodes. Control manager. Job of control manager is to look at the request, which is your desired state, and look at the actual state and act accordingly and make sure all the necessary things that is required to do is done. The last component in the control plane is etcd. HCD is distributed key value database. It is the only stateful component in the whole Kubernetes architecture. Everything, all the state information is kept in HCD. Let's look at the worker node side. The key component is kubelet. Kubelet job is to take request from master and fulfill them. It uses Docker as container runtime to run the actual containers there is another component called kube proxy job of the kube proxy is to manage networking within the worker nodes and provide that layer for communication between all the application and the actual workload or jobs that are run are called pods we'll look into this also in more detail now let's understand how all of this communication uh, works within the kubernetes world so let's say client sends a request to API server that I want this application to be deployed in the Kubernetes cluster. That request is received by the API server and it is stored in HCD. Now, control manager keeps looking at what are the requests that are present in HCD. It looks at what is the current state and then decides what to be done. Once the decision has been made that this many pods to be spin up, scheduler comes into the picture and it looks at, okay, I have to fulfill three pod requests. 
then it looks at what is the state of the worker nodes and based on the state it assigns the actual power onto the worker node now kubelet which is part of the worker nodes keeps listening to the request via api server now if there is a new request which is assigned to the worker node that kubelet is going to pick that request and it is going to use docker runtime to spin up new pods and eventually containers that's how the whole sequence works now if there is a networking if new pods are spin up new ip to be assigned and then make sure that everybody is aware of those ips and routes to be defined all that work is done by the kube proxy so kube proxy also keeps listening to any of the state change and then works accordingly to set up the ip table rules so that the pod to pod communication can happen easily that's how the whole kubernetes architecture is defined let's just recap quickly the key components of the kubernetes control plane the first one is hcd which is the distributed key value store it is used to store all cluster information and its state this is the only stateful component in kubernetes and it is the source of truth the second component is api server acts as a front end or the face of the control plane every communication happens via api server exposes the rest api endpoints to interact with kubernetes cluster and often mistaken as a master so api server is a master for a uh, kubernetes cluster scheduler constantly keeps looking for the new pod request assign nodes to the newly requested pods and it uses various affinity information given to assign particular node the control manager ensures the desired state is achieved in the cluster it key constantly looks at desired state and actual states and acts accordingly let's look at the uh, worker node components kubelet kubelet is the main agent on the node and often mistaken as a node itself keeps watching for any new request from api server and any new job to be fulfilled it instantiates pod and also reports back to the master the current state of the actual pods running on the uh, worker node container runtime this we have looked at docker so it deals with pulls images starts stops container and to integrate with kubernetes it uses the oci compliant container engine in most of the case the de facto is docker kube proxy deals with networking within the node assigns ip to each pod and with the help of a container network interface provider and it also helps to primarily resolve the service abstractions all the ip table rules are updated by kube proxy now the question comes okay i have my kubernetes cluster which is up and running right now how do i connect and communicate with kubernetes cluster so for example in case of jenkins we have a front end ui where we go on the web console and uh, do all the necessary things to do in case of kubernetes there is a kubernetes command line tool which is called as kubectl or kubectl kubectl is command line tool to communicate with the kubernetes cluster and it actually communicates over restful api interface to api server of the kubernetes cluster kubernetes command line tool the first argument is the command which is like get patch db describe all that stuff the second is the type or the resources that we want to get so it is like get pods services jobs like that so delete pods like that so if i say kubectl kubectl get pods get jobs or kubectl delete pods delete services like that and now the third part is the name of the pod that we want to create and the fourth part is the flags we say minus o wide or any other options that we provide to the command line now let's look at how kubectl connects to kubernetes cluster it connects to the api server component of 
Kubernetes control plane Kubernetes master. And it uses RESTful API endpoint to communicate with Kubernetes cluster. All the information related to which cluster to connect is stored in kubeconfig. I'll show you uh, in the demo in more detail. Now kubeconfig is having context. Context helps kubectl to connect to Kubernetes cluster. Context consists of cluster information, user information, and namespace. So there are three parts to context, cluster, user, and namespace. Default location of the kubeconfig file that kubectl will look into is home folder dot kubeconfig file. This is the file where all the information is. If you want to override the uh, location, you can use the kubeconfig environment variable for same. Now let, let's look at this in action. In my current setup, I have Kubernetes version, which is 1.8. 18.2 latest and the server that I am connected to is also running on 1.18.2. This is a sprint short, so it is easy to read. So client version, which is my command line tool version is 1.18.2 and my server version is where I am connected to is also 1.18.2. I have a setup using Vagrant. So if you look at here, I have this four machines running which is Kubernetes cluster. I have one master and three worker nodes. So if I want to look at this, I can say kubectl get nodes. Again, remember the pattern kubectl get is your operations that you want to do and nodes is a resource type. Kubernetes master in ready state role is master and running from 18 hours. I have Kubernetes node one, two, and three. These are the three worker nodes. If I have to give option, I can say O wide. It gives me more information about the overall uh, cluster. So these are the internal IP address of each of the machines that I have running on the virtual box. Now let's look at kubectl config view. If you look at this config view, I have multiple cluster set up here. So if I look at the context here i have two context setup one is minikube and another one is the kubernetes cluster which is running on the virtual box i have users again two users one specific to each cluster information which is like server where the endpoint is right so if you look at the master here which is running on internal ip 10 10 10 2 it's connected here on port 6443. That's the information where uh, it has to connect to. So these are the cluster information. And when I'm running Minikube, Minikube is running on this IP. So it connects to the API server on this URL endpoint. That's how all the information is kept. So if I want to know kubectl get, sorry, config get context, it can show me that I have two context here. Echo dollar config it says that i have config as well as i have this both specified in my cube config so that i can connect to both of them so ideally you keep all your cube config and export variable to append all the configs so that you can switch between them and have a separate file let's look at what are the components running right so we have looked at nodes which are my number of machines that i have uh, in my Kubernetes cluster. There's one more command I can just show you right now get pods, which shows the pods running in my Kubernetes cluster. So when I say minus A, which means I want to see all the pods. So if you notice here, all the pods running are most of them that we talked about, right? If you look at the master node where all the components are running, the first component HCD. So even Kubernetes components are running as pods. So HCD, API server, control manager, and scheduler. So these are the four components, right? HCD, API server, control manager, and scheduler. Four components running on the master. And in case of uh, nodes, 
we have cube proxy so three nodes all three nodes is having cube proxy and master is also having the cube proxy running on that so now this is my three no worker node cluster so one master and three worker node let me quickly show you how i'll, I'll spin up my mini cube and show you the mini cube version of the same cluster okay so if you notice i have halted my vagrant uh, machines and started uh, mini cube on my machine here so if i go here cube ctl config get context you'll notice that the context is shifted to mini cube now if i do cube ctl get nodes you'll see there is only one node now the difference between mini cube and this is in this case the master will never run any jobs or workload that's how i have configured it in case of mini cube it is just one machine and it acts as a master as well as worker so the actual uh, pods will also the application is also going to run on the mini cube environment now if you notice here all the pods are still there right so hcd is there api server is there control manager is there scheduler is there cube proxy is there so that's how if you see mini cube mini cube is a very good uh, way to get started learn and practice uh, kubernetes so in exercise what you have to do is like you have to make sure you have installed your cube ctl uh, which is the command line tool uh, follow the instructions on the page install mini cube just run following commands to see all the uh, details about your uh, server so when you start mini cube it will automatically configure your cube config and everything and you will have your cluster connected with your cube ctl 